In this step, we will do two things. One is we'll create the login servlet from scratch. And the second one is we would start using a JSP instead of writing content directly from the servlet. Let's get started with the first part. I will delete the login servlet completely and stop the server as well. We now want to create a login servlet. So what I'll do is right click on the source main Java and say new class. The package I will use is you can use anything actually. Let's use com dot in 28 minutes and the name we already know it's login servlet. Click finish. The first step in creating a servlet is you need to extend. What do you need to extend? We discussed that in the previous class. You need to extend HTTP servlet. And if you type in HTTP servlet and press control space bar, we need to do the import of HTTP servlet and Eclipse provides an easy way of doing that. That's control space bar. So press control and space bar together and it would show what are the options. And I would choose the first one. So I would press enter. You would see that now this particular import is added in. So what did we import? We imported the HTTP servlet. So that's very good. That's a very good start. Now I would want to go ahead and add the URL to this. How do we add the URL? By using the annotation web servlet. So I type in web, at web servlet. Annotation starts with at. Web servlet is the name of the annotation. Type it in and press control space bar. And you already see that it's imported. So the web servlet is now imported. So it's this is the import which is used and now to this I would want to add in a parameter for the URL. So how do I add in a URL? I open I put in a open bracket close bracket and press control space again and it shows the options. The option I want to use is URL pattern. So I would use URL patterns and give it a value. What's the URL pattern that we want to give it to this? login.do. Most important thing is the URL pattern should start with a slash. slash login.do. That's the URL pattern that we are assigning to this particular servlet. Let's go ahead and now add in the next important thing which is we want to handle the get method. So we want to handle the get request. So I'll go to the HTTP servlet class and copy this. So this is the definition which we are going to use. So I'll copy that in. This is the method which we are going to override on the HTTP servlet. So the do get method we are going to implement. So I don't want to use the package names directly in here. So I'll remove the package name. You can press control space at the end of it and import the Java X servlet and similarly in here HTTP servlet request. Also, I would want to import one way of doing this would have been to just copy this and import that particular class. Now I don't need to do this here. So that's simple. So now we have a HTTP servlet request, HTTP servlet response. It's called arg0. I hate that. I'll call this request and let's call this response. Let's go ahead and also import these two classes as well. Java X servlet. I don't need it. So I mean, I need it, but I don't need the package definition directly in the code. So I'll do control space again at the end of servlet exception. So I'll go to the end of servlet exception, do control space. So we have imported that in now IO expect exception also let's remove the package definition go to the end press control space I would want to use the IO expect exception from the Java IO that's it we have now a simple do get method defined so now we want to write to the response to be able to write to the response we need to get a writer so get writer so that's the third step so we are now getting the writer sorry that's the fourth step the third step was to define the do get method we have done that successfully and now we are getting the response dot get writer print writer writer is equal to response dot get writer you can import in the print writer as well so it's in java io print writer writer dot print ln some dummy stuff i don't really care what it is i just want to send this back and see whether this is getting printed to the browser this is not really a HTML response but I don't really care the first thing I care is whether it's working so I'll go ahead and do a run as MVN build and choose Tomcat 7 colon run which we used earlier I would wait for the server to start up and refresh the browser the URL which we gave it is login.do now I press a refresh again and you see 
the dummy stuff is printed out to the console. So if I look at the get request, the response which came back is what we typed in dummy stuff. So if I go ahead and change the response now from dummy stuff and add in one more line, dummy stuff too, hold on to a little time until you see reloading context is completed. Once the reload is completed, the servlet is reloaded and now I can refresh and you see dummy stuff, dummy stuff too. And if I look at the response, it's dummy stuff, dummy stuff too. Actually, this is not really a good way of doing it. The browser understands HTML and we need to send the data which we want to show on the browser in HTML format. What I've done now is I copied a little bit of content in here. So it's HTML head title Yahoo head body slash body HTML. This is a well formatted HTML. The other thing which I have done is also rename the variable instead of calling it writer, I called it out. So now this particular piece of code would print whatever you see on the screen. So whatever you see in the double quotes would be printed out to the browser, would be sent as a response to the browser. It's not really printing out to the browser. What happens is a request is sent and in response, you would get whatever we have in this thing. So we have exactly this in here as well. So that's how your servlet works. A servlet gets a HTTP request, we send a HTTP response back. We looked at the four steps in creating the servlet in here. Now, let's go ahead and change this to a JSP. I know the first question is, why should we go for a JSP? Why can't we keep writing code like this? A servlet is a Java class. Java is a language where it's easy to do business logic. What we are doing in this particular servlet is trying to send some HTML content out to the browser. So we wanted to send this response out to the browser. That's not what Java is good at. Java is really good at doing business logic and not really good at sending static content out because I'm, I have to repeat out.println so many times in here. Java EE came up with this concept of JSPs, Java Server Pages. These Java Server Pages are designed to make writing dynamic content to the web browser very easy. One important thing you need to know is even JSPs finally compile to a servlet. So even though I write a JSP, at the end the JSP would be converted to a servlet. So there is not really any performance benefit in going for a JSP because a JSP also converts to a servlet by the end anyway. The reason why we use JSPs is that it's easier to write dynamic HTML content in a JSP rather than in a servlet. Let's go ahead and create our first JSP. Typically in a web application, we write all our Java code in source main Java and we have all our JSPs in a folder web INF. I would want to create a folder for the views. JSP is a view, so I would create a new folder in WebINF. I'll call this views. I click finish and I'll create right click new JSP file. We want to use this for login, so I would call this login.jsp. You have the first JSP file created with a lot of things in here. Uh, by default, Eclipse is generating a doc type HTML 4.0. So this is HTML4. I'll remove all the content so that it becomes HTML5. So the default is HTML5. So when I say doc type HTML, the default is HTML5. So now I have a HTML5 JSP, except that the title needs some customization. So what we want to do in the title is what we did in login servlet. So let's go ahead and put a title as, as Yahoo from JSP, just for us to be sure that it's coming from the JSP. So Yahoo from JSP, JSP. So now we have a simple JSP created. This follows typical HTML structure. We have very little content in the body, it just says my first JSP. The JSP is ready. In the servlet, we need to redirect to the JSP. When user hits login.do URL, we want to go we want him to go from the servlet to the JSP. We want to redirect him from the servlet to the JSP. How do we do that? The way we redirect a request to a JSP is very simple. You need to do request.get request dispatcher. So this is a get request dispatcher is a method on the request. 
and to this I need to pass in where the JSP is so where is the JSP so I need to pass in where my JSP is and forward the request to it so I'll pass in forward request comma response redirecting to a JSP is very very simple the first thing is you get the dis request dispatcher so I get the request dispatcher and point it to where my JSP is this particular thing is not really correct right now so wherever my JSP is I would need to put it in here and I would forward the request response to it so that's it that's how you forward it to a JSP but now I would need to give it the path to the JSP the way we get give the path to a JSP in a servlet in a Java web application is starting from web INF so I would need to start from web INF so the path if we look at it is what is the path where is the login.jsp present in starting from web inf slash web inf slash views slash login.jsp that's basically where our jsp is in web inf views login.jsp and i typed it in here web inf views login.jsp now the servlet would redirect to the jsp let's see if it's working let's go to the browser and i would type in localhost colon 8080 slash login dot do there you go you have the content coming out from the jsp my first jsp yahoo from jsp so you have your first html content output from your jsp so in this step we had actually created the login servlet by hand and then we made it redirect to a jsp we use JSPs because in a JSP it's easy to write HTML content. Earlier in the servlet we had to do a lot of out.println's to generate this content out. But in a JSP you just keep writing HTML out and it would be output, it would be sent back in the response to the browser. As in a lot of things, the first steps in developing a web application are the most difficult ones. You have now completed two steps and these two steps in my perspective are the most difficult steps to take and from here on it will be an easy ride let's get going until the next step bye bye